it's the internet you're busy let's do this i'm jeff grubb i write over on gamesbeat.com i do a show on giant bomb called grub snacks and today we're reviewing the analog pocket it's here i have it finally uh, i've had it for a few weeks actually i've been playing around with it a lot uh, i've been really enjoying it i've been playing game boy game boy color and game boy advance games it also works with game gear i i haven't tested the game gear they did send over the game gear adapter kit I don't have any Game Gear games to test it with. I'll look into doing something about that. But so far, I think I could talk pretty thoroughly about what this thing does well, who it's for, and everything else. The Analog Pocket is a $200 handheld. It's available now-ish. They're gonna put more up for sale tomorrow, they say. They want everyone who wants to be able to get one to actually be able to get one. We'll see how that works out. The system itself is a FPGA-based hardware solution to running these games it's not really quite emulation it's a little bit something different than what we typically use that word for uh, but effectively it is emulating the original hardware using these field programmable gate array systems where you can load on these cores and tell this big chip inside here how to uh, uh, set itself up so that it behaves like an original game boy chip now this does this very well you're going to put in your games and they're going to behave just like they should it is very authentic and that's what this is going for it is trying to be an authentic system that works just like you remember your game boy working now there are some extra options here but let's be clear this is for people who care about having that original experience only amplified in every way so the system is very good in terms of feeling nice it feels a premium in the hand uh the controls are really solid i think that this d-pad is very good these buttons are great even the shoulder buttons that are on the back here they're kind of small but they feel a lot like the shoulder buttons did on the game boy advance and the game boy uh, sp especially uh game boy advance sp and overall i am r really impressed by that but the thing that is like the, the most mind-blowing is the screen this is an exact 10x resolution of the original Game Boy screen. So basically you're gonna get 1440p here. That 10x resolution bump means that you get an exact integer scale of original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games uh, to fit perfectly on the screen and they're gonna look better than they've ever looked before. And it's difficult to overstate just how good they end up looking. Um, this is a fantastic screen that is, even when it's trying to emulate the screens of the old systems, there are so many pixels just slammed inside of this little space that they can emulate even the lines of an lcd screen of an old lcd screen and that looks fantastic as well it is again i think probably the best way to play these games now by going for authenticity they are making sure that you can play your cart your cartridges that this is a cartridge based system this is not going to be the kind of thing where you are going to load your roms on and it's just going to work like a lot of handhelds you can get from china right now this is something very different this is meant to be basically the same hardware just made in a modern setting now that means that you are going to mostly need to bring your original cartridges there are some ways around that but if you have a large library of game boy game boy color game boy advance game gear games uh this will work really well and if playing those games in a way that feels right feels authentic that feels um true to what you experience as a kid but maybe with a much better screen this is the ideal product for you if you are someone that is maybe kind of a tourist someone who is looking at old games that they might have missed just kind of casually wanting to go back and try some of them out this is probably a little bit less ideal uh this is definitely for the more hardcore but if you have your old pokemon cartridges sitting around and you want to pop them in here and experience them in uh, you know 10x resolution and, and all the glory that that implies um, you're going to get a lot out of this So you see we have Wario here showing off Wario Land 4. I think the screen looks fantastic. We'll take a closer look. Well, there's my reflection. Hello, reflection. We'll take a closer look at the screen here in a moment and, and what it's capable of. But just a quick glance. The game looks fantastic. Let's switch between some of the modes. Game Boy Advance LCD, SP 101. 
you can kind of see some of the differences here. We'll take a closer look here in a second. Uh, but that analog GBA look is just fantastic, I think. It's just really super vibrant, even if we have to cut off the top and the bottom. So let's take a look around the device. You can see the cartridge there pops right in the back. It sticks out even if it's a Game Boy Advance look. You can see the triggers here. Um, these triggers, uh, they feel fantastic. I really like the way they feel. They feel a lot like a Game Boy Advance SP. Here's the power button. There's the volume button. There's the speaker. I find that it's actually pretty difficult to tell the difference between the power and the volume when it's dark and you can't see everything. Uh, on the bottom there, you can see we have the uh, expansion port, we have a USB-C charging port, we have an uh, indicator light, and a 3.5 millimeter jack on the front. We have the D-pad, four face buttons, start and select, and the analog home button that brings up the menu. Uh, go through everything here. Uh, there's you know the FPGA logo for field programmable gate array, Select, analog home, start. We have the four face buttons, unlabeled uh, pretty wisely so that you don't get them confused as you're switching between stuff and a really nice D-pad. And on this side, we have another speaker. We have the SD card slot as well. You use this to upgrade the BIOS, the firmware of the system itself. The material's really nice. It feels very good. It, you know, it feels maybe a little bit hollow, just a tiny bit, ho not really fully hollow, but just a tiny bit empty uh, for something that costs two hundred dollars, and I'm not sure about the the durability of this plastic. It feels nice, but you can see there's already what looks like scratches, and those just might be scuff marks. But uh, I do think this thing will pick up scuff marks. You can see the viewing angle on that display though is just astounding. We had it completely turned to the side and you could still make out every single pixel. That's a big deal here for uh, for something. I, I've used some pretty poor uh, displays that don't have great viewing angles and you really do have to hold them perfectly and that can cause some fatigue. If you hold down the analog home button and you press up and down on the volume pad, uh, you can actually get brightness adjustments here from the screen. We are turning it up, turning it up, turning it up. You can get it brighter and brighter and brighter. Now we're at max brightness. Uh, and it really is quite bright once it's at ma max brightness. And even under max brightness, you still get pretty decent battery life. Now, you could play it at about half half battery life or half brightness and, and really extend that battery life. And that's plenty bright enough under most conditions, especially inside. Now you see if I hold down the home button and press left to right on the D-pad, I am switching between the various pre-programmed display modes. In the settings here, uh, you just hit the home button, you go to settings, you go to, you could get to the video mode here under uh, the different systems. Um, for Game Boy Advance, the main ones are sharpness, desaturation, frame blending, and size position. Uh, desaturation is maybe necessary if you're trying to more, more better emulate what the Game Boy Advance looks like compared to the Game Boy Advance SP and the SP-101. You can adjust the screen size. Now, the super high resolution of this display ensures that the uh, any sort of screen size adjustments you make should look pretty good uh, because uh, it'll be able to sort of interpolate and get the pixels in the right order uh, so they don't look odd because they're not integer scale. That's something that can happen uh, with a lot of devices, not really with the pocket because of its super high, high resolution again. Now, if you want to play a different game, you just go ahead and quit this. You can pull out your EverDrive, which has a bunch of games on it, and instead put in something like Donkey Kong. And again, that game sticking at the back, I think looks fantastic. It's a really cool way to display the game that you're playing. I love that. And we get an air here. Now, this is not something I don't think this is not a, really a problem with the analog pocket. These games are very old at this point. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit, confirm. I'm going to pull it out, pop it back in, just kind of shimmy it a little bit and make sure those con connections are all good. I can probably clean that and avoid this, but there we go. It's working. No problem. Let's go ahead and switch to the dock mode so we can take a better look at the interface. So here we have the interface for the analog pocket. It's pretty standard, especially if you've used anything else from analog before. Play cartridge would obviously boot the cartridge that is in the slot. Uh, controllers, if you are connecting other controllers to this device, you could do so and you can have up to four. I believe it uses Bluetooth. I think it even has a built-in 2.4 gigahertz connection for certain 8-bit DOE controllers. We'll go to tools, 
Nano Loop, and GB Studio. GB Studio is in basically an open development toolkit to make Game Boy games, and they will they'll run on actual Game Boy hardware. Uh, but this will enable you to basically boot up Game Boy, the Game Boy Studio creations right here natively on your analog pocket. Nano Loop is a music creation tool. It's pretty handy. I am not a musician. I was messing around with this a little bit, made some truly horrendous sounding stuff. It's cool that it's in there. A couple things to keep in mind if you're using the EverDrive. It does work technically. Uh, here is, go to Golden Sun here, load that up. You see everything works, everything's, you know, the game is, is working. You can even um, save your state. We'll save state. Now I'll press down, I'll load state. Takes us right back there. That'll work even if you leave the game and come back and you start like a different game on the EverDrive. It'll work as long as you're back in this ROM. Uh, I think you only have one save state slot though, uh, so far. That feature is in beta testing. They will probably expand a lot of that stuff as time goes on. Uh, the important thing to note, to note, though, with the EverDrive is sleep mode does not work. So, you have a power setting here. This, this is whether you're docked or not. You go to power, you go to sleep, and you will get this warning. Sleep mode is not supported by this cartridge. Power off anyway. And if I were to confirm, it would just shut down the system. So, all right, here's Tetris for Game Boy. If I were to now go and hit power and hit sleep, it just goes right into sleep mode. And there we are. And now I can probably hit a couple buttons and bring it back. And here we are, and it's right back in the game. So here's Ninja 5.0 running on the analog pocket off of an EverDrive. You can immediately see that it takes up as much of the screen as possible. Uh, the black bars are on the side now instead of on the top and the bottom like Game Boy Advance games have on the pocket screen itself. Obviously the difference here, this is a 16 by nine display that we're using to play the game through the dock. And on the pocket, the pocket itself has the 4x3 Game Boy Advance, and, or I'm sorry, Game Boy and Game Boy Color aspect ratio. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the options. Uh, we can get into that just by hitting the, the menu button and going to settings. And you can see not, not, not much has changed. We do have this dock here. We could change the video options of the dock. Um, whereas 720p 60 hertz was something that made a lot of sense, if even if you were using... Um, a 4K television for something like the Super uh, Super NT or the Genesis. Really, the best option here is always 1080p 60. The reason 720p 60 made sense was because that looks really good with scan lines, especially emulated scan lines. Um, scan lines don't make sense with handheld games. They were all, all, all always on LCD displays, so you wouldn't want to have scan lines. Instead, you just have 1080p 60 hertz. That looks great. If you're some pal weirdo, here's your 50 hertz stuff. Once you are in the docked mode, uh, you actually get fewer options. You can see their display mode, frame blending, desaturation are all turned off. And instead, all you have is sharpness. I will say that sharpness is something you might want to play around with, depending on which game you're playing with. We turn it all the way down. It looks pretty fuzzy. It's definitely trying to sort of capture what it felt like to look at a Game Boy Advance game on a tiny screen. Uh, I, I think that the sharp... The sharpness of plus three, which is the you know max setting here, um, that still looks really nice in a lot of situations. Uh, but if you're playing like one of those faux 3D games, I think plus two is probably where you want to be, especially something like Stuntman, where the you know the 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 sprite work is very very blocky and pixelated, and you the sharp pixels are just not going to be great there. The highest capacity Game Boy Advance cartridge was 32 megabytes not a lot of space for audio so game boy advance had super compressed audio and even then it's really slow processor struggled to decompress codecs so it would do a crappy version of crappy music basically uh so you can have that uh, you know if you want by clicking original audio and it will try to emulate uh th the way that game boy advance would decompress codecs now high quality basically tries to handle those codecs the way that they were always intended to be handled and the Game Boy Advance just wasn't good enough to do so. And so this gives you high quality. There's, you're not gonna notice much difference again because all of the music on the Game Boy Advance pretty bad because it's super compressed. And then, and then yeah, uh, you have the option for controls here where you can uh, pretend like you're going through a Super Game Boy. So if you're playing with a Super Nintendo controller, that's probably pretty useful. And then mirror 
L and R will swap the L and R buttons on whatever controller you're using. When it's time to swap a game out, you just hit quick game, confirm. You can see here, we're just still back at the menu. I'm actually swapping a game out. Let's drop another game in. And then I'm gonna hit play cartridge. And then you can see right away, we have the Game Boy Super Mario Land. Again, filling up as much of the screen as possible. Of course, you do not get the screen display options here. I'm hitting left and right while holding the home button. Nothing doing, it's not gonna change that. So instead, um, what options do we have? Again, you gotta go to systems. Let's go to Game Boy this time, video. We have color palettes. So we could swap out some color palettes. Some of these games are, um, are sort of meant to work with this stuff. Anything that worked with the Super Game Boy would look really good with this. Some of these games like Super, Super Mario Land here just kind of looks a bit funky with these options, but whatever, like it, it still brings a little bit of color into these black and white games. So here's a Game Boy Color game, uh, you know, a native Game Boy Color game one of, with one of the clear cartridges. Looks really good on here again. I have it set to play Game Boy Color games as if they're running through a Game Boy Advance. This is important because some Game Boy Color games have Game Boy Advanced enhancements. Uh, I think something like Shantae might have that, or Shantae was supposed to have that. Basically, it's there if you if you need it. For for all these, you will have the uh, the scale option of the integer scale, scale 7x for Game Boy Color, Game Boy um, for Game Boy Advance. I believe it's scale 6x. Uh, you, you could see that you know it's going to look exactly right. It's going to look perfect. But here's the thing. I think that the interpolation with this thing is so good that really rarely are you going to notice any issues, um, especially on that 1440p screen with such a high resolution. You're not going to like it's, it's going to be able to find the right pixel for you. Don't worry. So let's do the final thoughts. The analog pocket is fantastic, especially if you are someone who has that large cartridge collection like we talked about. Now, if you are coming to the device and you're not sure you know what i'll use myself as an example in a few months i'm going to get a craving to play some old game and i might have the cartridge i might not if i have the cartridge i think that there's a strong chance that i will use this device to play it if it's game boy game boy advance or, or, or game boy color and as more cores come out for this system maybe then we'll start seeing maybe there, maybe this would be a good way to play those games as well but that's still yet to be seen. We're gonna have to wait to see what support is like for that. So let's not let's not even imagine that world yet. But while I think it would be great to play cartridge games that I own on this system because it's nice to be, you know, one on one with a game and feel like you have to like finish that before you can take the cartridge out and move on. So it encourages you to stick with stuff a little bit longer. That's that's great. I love that. And the screen and these buttons and the way this thing feels and the battery life all fantastic and yet if i were looking for a little bit more convenience if i want something that is um you know that i might already have lying around instead of you know getting this out of its protective casing or something because it's you know such a premium device i might just end up using the anbernick device that i have laying around these one of these chinese handhelds that you know especially if it's like a game boy advance game and it has the right ratio of screen or better ratio of screen i might might just end up doing that instead and games look great on there it's not 10x resolution it's not that super crisp display of this system uh but it's also something i would feel good about keeping in my pocket going out and you know maybe pulling out at a restaurant or on a plane or something like that whereas this is again a little bit more expensive and a little bit something you're going to treat more gingerly point is is i can imagine a world in which even having this i still begin looking to other devices for different reasons um and yet i want to confirm i want to like say like you know final thought this does what it promised to do it does feel like the definitive way to play game boy and game boy color games and the near definitive way to play game boy advance games um you know the black bars at the bottom the top and the bottom not the end of the world will live uh overall though I i'm just I'm, I'm blown away they did a really good job on this I hope everyone who wants one gets one. We all deserve it, right? We've been through hell over the last two years. Why not? And um, if you are someone who's just like, hey, I, I don't know if it's for me. If you have Game Boy, Game Boy Color cartridges sitting around, 
that you want to go back and play and you are always eyeing like, oh, maybe I could do a screen replacement on one of my old Game Boys or something. I would, if this is available, skip that and do this instead. That's what I would say. Do this instead. It's, it's a better solution. It really is. Okay. That's going to do it for me. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. Let's get out of here. Um, if you want to get one of these, I believe they're, they said, you know, so far over the weekend that they're going to have more for sale on December 14th. Try to get it then. And if you're watching this after December 14th, well, hopefully you have a chance to get one again in the future. I really hope so. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time, have a good one. Take care of yourself and goodbye. Make this change screens. Can make it look like a pinball screen. I like that. Pinball Matrix. Game Boy Game Boy Pocket Light never came out in America. That's what games looked like on that looks like it looks wrong to me. I need that pea soup. Of course, if you want the God, it just looks so crisp and clean even on video like this.